Hello everyone, how are you doing? Today I'm going to talk about, so I've been asked quite a few times to talk about uh, some translation tips and tricks and I've, uh, I've talked about some generic ones. It's just very hard to talk about them for a specific, am I in focus? Yes, I guess. For specific um, languages because they're all so different and it really depends on which language you're dealing with and which language combination and uh, not to mention all the fields and specializations and whatnot. So that's why it's almost impossible to do that. However, having said that, I'm still going to do that. Um, I deal with Italian to English translations. And so what I'm going to do is talk about some of the issues that I have dealing specifically with Italian to English. And hopefully you can find this, uh, this useful. I think if you deal with Romance languages, you will find it useful. Um, but also hopefully many other languages uh, because similar stuff can happen, although not the same. And uh, um, there are many things that I look out for when I, ha when I uh, perform translations, but I, I'm just going to name some of the main ones now. Uh, once again, this is specific to from Italian into English. Italian is source language, the target language is English because that's my combination. So I'm going to talk about those. So the first thing that I do uh, that I wanted to mention and that it pretty much I think should be standard for every single language out there is I read over stuff later on. I do my own editing. I will translate and once I'm done translating I take a breather, preferably overnight. I sleep on it. The next day I get my coffee, whatever, whatever, and I just read through my translation all in English and see what flows, what doesn't, and what seems a bit off or anything like that. While I was doing the translations, if some questions or something pop into mind, I might already put a note to look out for it. But regardless, I'm still going to read over it and try to make sense of it. The reason for this is because when I'm translating the first time, I'm doing it with an Italian state of mind. And so here's an example that I had recently. Uh, I had this phrase which, uh, let's if I can find it. Oh, here. So th just this phrase. Un'analisi dei dati delle tabelle del progetto, which granted is, isn't very good Italian anyway, but when people are writing these reports and stuff, they're not, you know, they're just writing stuff down. And in, in Italian, it's fine. Un'analisi dei dati delle tabelle del progetto. And, um, and I, so, so I, I could translate this as anal an analysis of the data of the tables of the project. But this sounds very kind of staccato in English. It doesn't sound right. So what I would do when I read over this, I say when a, an analysis of the data, oh, a data analysis. And you see this a lot with possessives, by the way, you know, or apostrophe S that you have that in English, but you don't have it in Italian. So, you know, the tabelle del progetto, I could put of the projects tables, project apostrophe S tables. So a data analysis of the projects tables, or even a data analysis of the tables in the project, um, or uh, tables of the project or something like that. Uh, that could work uh, th that could work as well but many times so this is kind of I mean it depends on your on how many times you come across th these types of phrases it might seem obvious or not but many times it's when you're rereading it in English that you realize things sound a bit off or sound a bit too Italian at least that I do and so I really need that rereading with a different mentality not thinking in Italian but thinking in English and so I highly recommend that for when, no matter what your language combination is, that you do this rereading so you can think things through in the new, in the target language. Sorry. Next one. Uh, the next point I have is, oh, double negatives. Double negatives have been the bane of my existence. They exist in Italian. They exist in all Romance languages and many different languages. They do not exist in English. The most common thing is something like, you don't know nothing about this. You don't say that in English. Uh, but in Italian you do. Non sa niente, non so niente, non ho fatto niente. I didn't do nothing, you say. But in English you have to say, I didn't do anything. Now, usually these are very easy to spot and so it's fine. Uh, the issue is when you have long complicated sentences in legalese or in something like that, that uh, you need to catch. And those, and that's also why I do the rereading because quite frankly, uh, it, many times in the rereading is when I catch them. And here too, there's one that I found re that I saved recently because I, I thought it would be a good example. Well, it had a whole beginning part of the sentence and then comma, and then it had, again, I'm going to say this all in Italian because that's my language, but anyway, it had comma, salvo che la sostanza dell'operazione del contratto non inducano ad attribuire a tale, compone a tale componente una diversa natura e quindi un diverso trattamento contabile. 
Right. You know, one of those phrases. And so, you know, you're translating it. And th that's the thing. When I first translated, I was like, unless this, the the substance, uh, now I don't remember. I didn't write it down much. But anyway, unless the substance of the operation or of the contract doesn't, um, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't, Induca, no, doesn't force, I, I didn't say induce, I don't remember, anyway. Uh, no inducan attributed, uh, um, doesn't make you attribute uh, a different type of nature, blah, 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 to this component. Anyway, the problem there was, I said, unless the su substance of the operation of the contract doesn't uh, force you to blah, blah, blah. That's not it. It has two negatives, unless and doesn't. But once again, that's a double negative. So it should, it should say, unless the substance of the operation of the contract forces you to, or makes you do blah, blah, blah. And that can be tricky many times. So, and by the way, out of curiosity, because I mentioned before that Google Translate is not good at double negatives, I'd plug this into Google Translate, Bing Translate, and uh, Sistranet, because those are the only ones I know, and they all totally didn't catch it. They got it wrong. By the way, Bing Translate came up with it's very bad. Um, so please, if you're using Bing Translate, well, don't use any of these. And I've mentioned before why you shouldn't, because if you're dealing with proprietary text, they take ownership of the text. But anyway, it, um, they, were, they were terrible at this. These things like double negatives, especially in complicated sentences, you're going to have to find them yourselves. And for me, it's so much easier to find them when I reread the text thinking in the target language in English. And um, so anyway, yeah, a sentence like that is hard to find if uh, if you're thinking in one language rather than another. And that was my issue. I was thinking more in Italian, so I was like, unless the substance of the operation of the contract doesn't force you to blah, 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 I meant forces you, not doesn't force you. So let's go on. The next point uh, that I do, so, and so this is something I do every time I have a translation, because many times I'll find lists of things and there'll be f proper names, like names of companies, say. It'll say, Ford, Boeing, Fiat, uh, Nestle, uh, Siemens, and General Electric. But what, and so all those, obviously, all those names, I would keep them as is because they're the same in whatever language. And the, the only issue is at the end, it will say Siemens e General Electric. And many times I don't catch that at the beginning because it just seems so natural that something space e, e obviously means and in Italian. It just makes me, uh, I, I just don't think about it. So what I have to do once I'm done with the translation, in fact, I have a list of all the steps that I take after translation. I don't consult it all the time because now I just do it by memory, but I do, I do a search for space, a e, space, space, letter E space, because that doesn't exist in English. And so if I find, you know, some list of things where I didn't catch the E, or even if it's just, two names, Oli and Benji, sometimes it doesn't click and there should be Oli and Benji. And uh, so I look for that or so space E space or space O space, which means or in Italian, again, doesn't exist in English. So there too, I know that it's something I didn't catch. So when I, whenever I'm done with the translation, after rereading it, I obviously do spell check and, uh, and all that good stuff. But I also, uh, do a search specifically for space E space and space O space. Whatever language you might have, there might be an equivalent to look for when you're in a similar situation. Like in French, it might be space ET space because that doesn't really exist in English um, or space OU space. Anyway, that's something I do and uh, I've, I've found it very useful. Uh, so yeah, I recommend doing it if you're dealing with Italian to English. Another thing and the last one I'm gonna mention in this video is, uh, is numbers formatting and that's a big one. Numbers formatting is such a pain because, so in English is the numbers, what you do is 1000, you're 1000.00, 1 comma 000, 000, point zero zero. That's how you do it. Of course, in Italian, many times it's the opposite. In fact, I deal with Switzerland and Italy. So there are various ways I've seen it written. I've seen 1.000 comma 00, 00 or one kind of apostrophe zero, 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 comma, zero, zero. It's always comma, zero, zero in Italian instead of point zero, zero for the decimal point, which they call virgola, comma. And this is a real pain. And so the best way that I know of translate, of doing this is, so if they use the, 
the apostrophe, I can do a find for apostrophes for those for those types of apostrophes. Of course, if it's text mixed with numbers, it can be a pain. But what I try to do so, OK, if it's just a table of numbers and maybe some line items. So if it's financial and income statement, balance sheet, something like that, what I can do is a find and replace. Find all the apostrophes, replace them with commas. Uh, actually, sorry. There, there you see the mistake. First, you find all the commas, you brace them with dots, then you find all the apostrophes and replace them with commas. Otherwise, you're stuck with commas both in both places and it's impossible to do. So I'll just do a find and replace. Um, if it's text mixed with numbers, many times you have a table next to a bunch of text or with two pages of text, then I'll just do find and replace. I don't do replace all, but I just replace each one as it goes down the table. If it's say like two pages of tables and then text, I, what I can do is copy the two pages of tables onto another file, do a find and replace all, and then copy it back, hoping the format stays the same. So yeah, there are various ways of dealing with it. Obviously you have to, you can't keep the, the notation as it was before because it needs to make sense in the target language. And then uh, those are some of the best ways that I find because A, find and replace finds all of them. And many times if you're just looking by yourself, you won't find all of them. And it's a quicker way to replace them all. Um, if you have, numbers just in the text like and uh, we sold 400 million copies of this and we made 12 million point 42 dollars and we did blah 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 but it's in the paragraphs interspersed in the text that you, you obviously need to look for yourself you can do a find and replace for the for things that aren't as common right and uh, so here i'm thinking the apostrophes might not be as common so you can check if there are any of those but otherwise yeah you need to do it yourself and be looking for these and uh, one thing that I will look out for many times if you have a lot of big numbers is to look for maybe dot zero 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 and try to find dot zero zero because those I need I know need to replace with comma zero zero zero. And so that kind of shows if I missed any of them. And uh, so anyway, uh, just, you know, another thing you could look for is maybe comma zero zero, but then you'll find the comma zero 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 anyway uh it's a judgment call you need to see for yourself but you just need to keep numbers into account so that's something that i do i do this find and replace thing every time i have to deal with numbers with a lot of financials and i do a lot of financial translations so that's why i have a lot of those um so yeah anyway those are just a couple tips they are once again more specific to italian to english but hopefully they're applicable if you deal especially with romance languages but if you deal with other languages they're somewhat applicable and uh, yeah, I hope you found that useful. And if you did, don't forget to click thumbs up because that always helps. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet with more tips and tricks for uh, freelance translators. Once again, I also offer services. I offer to read over resumes, online profiles, um, or your websites, whatever it might be for freelance translators. You can find uh, a questionnaire to fill out if you're interested in something like that down below. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting services. Find questionnaires for that as well down below, um, down in the description here. Uh, so feel free to get in touch if that's something you're interested in. And uh, that's pretty much it. I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.